Hey folks, Alan Mandic here. The folks at Creality just sent over one of these, their Sonic Pad. This is their Clipper tablet device that allows you to supposedly easily install Clipper firmware onto various printers. I also happen to have an Ender 5 S1 that I unboxed a while ago that's kind of just collecting filament and dust. I want to see if in one day I can not only convert that machine to Clipper using the Sonic Pad, but get some pretty good and fast print results out of it. So let's see what we can do. Now this Sonic Pad has been out for a little while now. This is just my first experience with it, which is why I want to see if I can just quickly get it set up on that Ender 5. I feel like this is pitched as the easy option for installing Clipper on a Creality machine, and I want to test that out. It's definitely not that I have a bunch of big projects going right now, and I only have so much time to devote to this. Generally, when I'm running Clipper, it's on a Raspberry Pi, a dedicated MCU board that has its own SBC, single board computer built into it, or I've even used an HP netbook that's over a decade old to run Clipper on a printer. In comparison, let's get the Sonic Pad out of the box to see what it is. Inside of the box is, of course, the Sonic Pad, which is a 7-inch touchscreen, 1280 by 600 resolution, and an SBC effectively strapped to the back of it, or you could consider it a tablet. On the side, we'll find two USB 2.0 ports for connectivity. Flipping it around to the back, we'll find the rest of the I.O., as well as a couple little kickstand legs on it. There's a single DSC barrel jack on here for powering the unit, two more USB 2.0 ports for a total of four, a wired LAN connection, an RJ45 port, though this does have wireless built in as well, if you want, you can wire it, and a sensor port that goes to the included accelerometer. This can be mounted to the tool head or on an Ender 3, the tool head and the bed at separate times for tuning input shaping to get the maximum acceleration and speed out of your machine. We'll come back to this. With that all out of the way, let's get this thing hooked up to the Sonic Pad and running on Clipper already. You might notice something about this Ender 5 S1 in particular. You can really see the hot end because the front bar is missing entirely off of this machine. I removed this during the live unboxing of this machine because I want to actually be able to see my first layer and record while this thing is printing and not just have a view of a bar. However, since we're about to push the speed on this thing, I want to reinforce those front extrusions a little bit. So I've got some parts that I designed for my Mercury 1 build of my Ender 5 Plus that you'll be seeing real soon. I'm going to install on here too. First up is these corner braces that I printed in Polymaker ASA. These are going to reinforce the upright extrusions on the front of the machine, which are usually held together by that front bar. These ones are a smaller version. I also have a larger version, both of which are available for download on my Thangs page, link in the description down below. I run the larger version on my Ender 5 Plus and have for quite some time. You'll see more of that on my Mercury 1 build. Next up are these weird little blue pieces. These are going to cap off those extrusions that are now exposed from removing that piece. They also provide a little bit of reinforcement as they bolt into the top of the extrusion and then to the side of the rails where the carriage actually rides. Assembly of the braces is really straightforward. Four M5 T-nuts on four M5 by 12 screws installed into the braces, slip them into the extrusions and tighten them into place. Now that those pieces are installed, we can set up the Sonic Pad on this machine. Diving into setting up the Sonic Pad really impressed me. I think Reality has gone a long way to simplifying the process of installing Clipper using this setup with the configurations it supports. Between the pretty decent included instruction manual and the on-screen prompts, it's pretty straightforward to select the language you're using, the region you are in, get connected to my studio Wi-Fi here, update the software on the Sonic Pad, and then finally select the configuration that I need for the machine that I'm using. Once everything's configured, it runs into a really solid self-test to test out the heaters and the fans, help you guide through testing these things to be sure that they're all working the way they're supposed to. There's also some additional configuration stuff you can do that's in the manual and will help, like PID tuning. All of that worked pretty beautifully, until I looked in the config and started to actually analyze what was going on here, and I found a couple of glaring problems. I wanted to take a look at the bed mesh and make sure that things were reading properly. I looked at it and it was pretty evident there's a problem here. There's a big cliff drop off where there's over a millimeter of variation at the back edge of the bed. I had a pretty good idea what was going on here, so I ran another self level so I could watch the probe in action. And sure enough, the probe at the back edge of the bed is off the edge of the bed. The offset for the probe on this machine in the BL Touch section is listed as negative seven on the X axis and 10 on the Y axis. 
That's where the probe would be located if this was a stock Ender 3 with a BL Touch kit on it. Correcting this is pretty straightforward. I manually measured the distance from the nozzle to the probe tip on the CR Touch. I found that it's about two millimeters negative on the X axis and 46 millimeters positive on the Y axis. With the probe parameters corrected, I'm actually able to get a proper bed level reading off of this thing and move forward with actually printing. I wanna do one last tuning thing before we get into laying down plastic with this machine. And that is using the input shaper tool to do a resonance compensation. The STL for this mount is found on the USB stick provided with the Sonic pad, and it allows me to mount to the side of the Sprite extruder on the tool head. I removed the fan guard to shave a little weight because it's just fan guard and aesthetic piece. The manual will help guide me to the input shaper tool. Once that's running, the machine will vibrate the X and Y axis at various frequencies to find the optimal settings for this machine. When the tool is done running, it does a save config and saves the new input shaper parameters into the printer config file. This calibration seems to work well. But I say that because it doesn't provide me any data. I can look into the printer config and see what parameters are being applied, but that is it. I don't get a graph of the frequency readings off of this thing. I don't have any of the information I would normally have when running a input shaper calibration in Clipper with a standard ADXL accelerometer. This is one of those times where they've simplified the process for the average consumer, and it seems like it should work, but for a power user like myself, I sure wish I could get that data. I created a print profile for this machine in Orca Slicer, the artist formerly known as the Soft Fever Fork of Bamboo Studio, so I could use its inbuilt calibration tools, and I just like the slicer overall. And this is where I ran into another problem. When Creality reached out to me about sending me the Sonic Pad, they also offered to send an Ender 5 S1 with it as well. I turned them down on that because I already had an Ender 5 S1, but they did that because they currently have a pretty good deal going on getting a Sonic Pad and an Ender 5 S1 together at a pretty good price because they feel that they go really well together. So it was a little strange to me that the USB stick that came with this machine had their Creality Print slicer on it, but there was no Ender 5 S1 profile in the Creality Print slicer. I haven't checked their website to see if there's a newer version of their slicer on there. It does include this machine, but I thought that was a heck of an oversight when they are pushing the Sonic Pad with this machine. Now comes time to actually lay down plastic. But before I can get really fast prints down, I need to know what this machine is capable of. It has that proprietary Creality nozzle with the longer heater block like a spider hot ends have. So the first thing I did was lay down a flow rate test. This racetrack allows me to run at increasing speeds as it goes up. I was able to create this in Orca Slicer and from this testing, I think I've narrowed in at about 15 millimeters cubed per second on this hot end. That is better than a standard Mark 8 hot end, but not quite as good as a volcano. I had hoped for a little bit better out of this. But armed with that information, I followed my own standard tuning steps, tuned in this filament a little bit, and started laying down real prints. Of course, the age-old question is, how fast can it print a tiny boat? So I laid down a Benji using Inland Gray PLA Plus, this thing printed in just about 28 minutes, breaking the 30 minute Benchy barrier. Are there faster Benchies? Absolutely, but I still think that's fairly impressive for the first print I actually did with this machine. The print quality also turned out a little better than I expected. A little bit of bow curling on the front from a little bit of overspeeding and undercooling, but otherwise the overall print quality is pretty solid on this. The next thing I printed was what's become my own personal Benchy, the Voron Stealth Burner Shroud. This is representative of real world printing that I do on a regular basis with a lot of complex geometry, angles and shapes to it that really highlights when a machine is working well. And overall, once again, the print results on this are pretty darn good. The corners look like maybe my pressure advance value is not 100% dialed in, but I only did one calibration test on that before I dove into testing, so it could use a little bit of improvement. But the layer consistencies, the geometry, the corners, they all look pretty good on this. After seeing the stealth burner results, I decided to run the tuning tower for pressure advance to dial that in just a little bit better. 
I did end up at a higher pressure advance value than I had previously set with the Ellis test. The last print I did was one of my social media calibration cubes, a 20 millimeter cube that you can use to help promote your social medias. Or mine, Mandic really on every platform. With the improved pressure advance values, the corners of this are so much crisper. This printed in about 20 minutes. I could have gone faster, but I wanted to aim for a little bit better quality while still getting it done fairly quickly. If I really look closely, I can find a little bit of ringing still in this print, but I don't even think the camera's really picking it up. And with that, we come down to a $169 question. Is the Sonic Pad worth it? If you can't tell by my shirt, it did take me longer than a day to get this video done, just because I underestimate always how much time producing a video actually takes. Setting up the Sonic Pad, using it on this machine, dialing things in, I absolutely could have done that in a day, no problem, if that's all I was doing. Filming a video adds a lot of time and complexity to things. This was the easiest experience I have ever had configuring a machine for Clipper. The least amount of time messing around, dialing in my printer configuration, getting Clipper installed onto the pad, it was already on there, so that's just so easy. I did have some configuration issues as I highlighted, but they were pretty easy for me to fix. Somebody else might have a little bit of trouble with them, and hopefully the information I provided can help you figure out what issues you might be running into. I am impressed with what Creality has done with the Sonic Pad. It is an easier way to get going with Clipper, especially if you don't know what you're doing. But I think that's part of the problem is they've oversimplified a handful of things. So somebody like myself doesn't have access to everything that they might want out of a Clipper device. But then also those folks who are just getting learning Clipper. This is one of those things that maybe they made it easy enough for you to get into, but you might be over your head when it comes to those complex issues of dialing in your printer configuration. Is that fair of me? I don't know. Only you will know if you are ready to get into something like this. Clipper, at the end of the day, no matter how easy some setup of it can be, is a little more involved than just putting an SD card into a printer and hitting print. One big thing I need to note about the Sonic Pad is that to my knowledge, currently Creality is in violation on the license for Clipper firmware and the Fluid web interface. They've even gone as far as to remove any naming or copyright from the Fluid interface to replacing it with Creality. And as of right now, they haven't released any source code that they have used to create this product, which is a violation of the licenses. If this changes, I will leave a pinned comment and a note in the description down below so you folks can be updated on it. But as of right now, they are in license violation. As of filming this video, the Ender 5 S1 with the Sonic Pad combo is $559. They do go really well together, but as I pointed out, there are a few things that need to be ironed out with the configuration for this machine and the slicer side of things. The Sonic Pad itself is $169 as I was just looking, and that's more expensive than a Raspberry Pi that's not being scalped, but good luck finding a Raspberry Pi right now. I can't decide whether or not this combo or this product, the Sonic Pad, is right for you. For me personally, I really want to see them get right with the open source licensing side of things, but the tools in it are pretty impressive and made this setup a lot easier than it would have been otherwise. And I think that's where we're going to wrap it up for this one, folks. I've got a lot of projects I have to get to so I can get new videos out for you. Maybe check out some of my older ones in the meantime, such as this one, tuning in a 3D printer. I use a lot of the steps from that video, tuning in this Ender 5S1 for this video. All right, folks, get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See ya.